Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about technical debt, sort of what is it, why it exists, and the harsh reality of most of the time why it doesn't get resolved and why doesn't why don't you ever pay that debt, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hey guys, uh, I know a lot of you are trying to get entry level jobs, internships, get land those junior level roles. Way Up is a company that specializes in getting those entry level roles. I've I've been an affiliate of theirs in the past, so if you're interested in checking them out, there'll be a link in the description. If you sign up, I get like 75 cents. It's completely free, no credit card required. Again, they specialize in entry level roles, so I I, I think it's a pretty cool thing. There's not too many companies and job boards that do that, so check them out. So what is technical debt? We should start there, right? Because uh, it'll make a little bit more sense for those of you who aren't familiar with it. So technical debt is essentially items that you need to complete to make your code more efficient, to make your code better, more readable, more understandable, but doesn't necessarily have value to the business, right? So let's say we built a feature and the feature works. It just, it works for their very finite purpose, but it doesn't work in the sense of it's the most efficient way possible. Uh, it's the cleanest way to write the code so that when new developers come into the fold, it's understandable and uh, it scales properly, right? So businesses are very focused on the now and then. And that, that kind of leads us to the why. Why does technical debt exist? Usually technical debt exists because unrealistic timelines are given, un unrealistic, uh, bad requirements are given, um, assumptions are made, communication is poor, and the developers sometimes have to cut corners to make deadlines, and you have this debt, this technical debt that you um, will have to solve or somebody else will when the time comes. Um, the, the, the unfortunate thing about technical debt, I mean, it's really all unfortunate, right? So, um, and you, you'll deal with this and your career a ton and a ton and a ton um, is that oftentimes that debt is never paid and the reason for it is it's hard to convince the business when you already have a working feature why you need to go back and spend you know 20 hours reworking something that that you already gave them they're like no screw that dylan just build us this other feature we want right <laughs> don't we that thing's already working don't touch that <coughs> so um, and it, I, I get where the business is coming from. So, so, um, and mo most developers do, which is why, uh, very rarely do you have tickets created for technical debt. Very rarely do these, does this ever have like an official, like, oh yeah, you know, the business wants us to go back and clean up this feature. Um, efficiency may be some technical debt that you actually go back and take care of, right? So if something's running a little slow, that could actually... Uh, be some of the technical debt you take care of once it becomes a problem for the customer, right? Um, and for the business. Um, but technical debt is a, a weird beast because it is something developers care about more than the business, but developers don't choose their own work most of the time. So when technical debt does get solved, it's usually the, the developer has an hour or two and it's like, yo, I'm gonna go clean up this, this API. I'm gonna go clean up this project. And they finally get around to doing it. But the business itself, it's kind of neutral on it, they, if not in the other direction. Um, and again, for requirements reasons, for deadline reasons, um, you know, every developer in the game has had someone show up to them and had uh, scope creep happen. And then before you know it, your two week project is really a four week project, but you still only have the two weeks. And then you say, okay, well, um, to do this, you know, you talk to your manager or something. It's like to get them what they want in the time that they need, these are the corners I have to cut. I have to make it static. I can't be dynamic. I have to do this, this, and that. Someone says, okay, we'll come back to it, basically. It's the, we'll come back to it and fix it later. But the problem is that almost never happens. Um, and it it's a, it's a very strange part of being a developer because as a, as a developer, you always want to build the best. You should, I should say. All good developers, all the bad ones, will just go and hard code everything and make it bad for us hardworking developers to code the best thing possible. And you want to get, deliver the best product. And the best product oftentimes is a long-term solution 
but long-term solutions uh, that are dynamic and, and work well, they oftentimes are a little bit more complex in nature because you need to plan for you know, future iterations and, and how this is going to be used by other applications. And you might be doubling the length of the project when in reality, the immediate project, you're doubling the length of the immediate project, I should say, while in reality, um, if you look at all future projects, you've, you're cutting that time by two thirds. But it's very hard for, for um, a lot of organizations to be forward thinking like that because there's so many, oh, well, this is a one-off. We're never going to build another app like this. We're never going to deal with something like that again. Um, and before you know it, you're back at square one six months later, rebuilding a very similar application that, uh, that because you had all this technical debt and you didn't rework it, you know, you might be doing it then, if, in, if ever. Or you might just be building something brand new when you could alter this existing application or if you built it the right way, well, with less time constraints could happen. Um, it's a very interesting uh, dynamic because it's almost a very political game when it comes to technical debt because you have two, two parties really. You have a, a business side who says, I don't care how you do it. I don't even really care to understand how it's done. All I care about is that the features that I need for our customers, for our clients are there, that they work. And uh, the, the, you know, you have developers like, I, I want to give you these features. I do. Don't think I'm hoarding them over here. But I want to make sure that when I do give you these features, they're built on something that can easily add more features. And well, and then you have the business who's like, we don't even want more features. Give us features we want. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, if we build it this way, we can make it so that we can do this again really quick. And so you have this very um, back and forth where the business gives you a set amount of time and then the developers have to find a way to make it work out. And a lot of times that just creates technical debt. I've had it at every workplace I've worked at where you're like, hey, we need something out in, in six hours on this thing that you're working on because they want to launch it with this other stuff. You're like six hours? <laughs> <laughs> like are you for real six hours yeah just hard code anything that you have to we don't care we'll come back to it i mean there's situations where it's not like oh well you're being lazy or it's just like all right well this is the way things are done right now so let's do the, the technical thing. it's it's very uh surreal in that aspect um and it's a it's something that one of the reasons i want to talk about these things like this um and I, I hope it doesn't come off as a negative thing uh, when I'm talking about technical debt. I, I'm more so referring to just a part of the business. And I think, it's, I think it's, it's helpful to talk about things that I didn't know existed or terms that I didn't know existed before I was a developer. Technical debt is one of them. Scope creep is another. That'll be a video in a week or so. Um, I had to refilm that video because I, uh, I, was, I filmed it right after something happened with scope with a bunch of scope creep i was kind of salty and uh i tell you what if if you guys are ever thinking of creating like an online personal brand and um that's something and, and you're still an employee right you're not self-employed one thing that i can you know we're going off on tangent a little bit but one thing that i can sort of recommend for you is that when you do do videos where you're sharing opinions that um you keep the personal out of it, out of the out of your your statements, and um, don't complain about it, right? So, um, you know, am I very happy with my company most of the time? Yeah. Are there times that I'm not? Like, yeah, any employee is kind of frustrated with the workplace, of course. And when you have those moments, don't put them in a video. And if you do put them in a video, don't rec don't release it <laughs> and then re-record it uh, after you've calmed down a little bit, right? So, a little personal branding tip there. Um, it's just come off more professional as well. So um, I, I don't consider myself the most professional guy in the world, um, but I, I do think that there is a level of professionalism that that should be should should be respected. And that is, of course, uh, what happens in house stays in house. You know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas uh, most of the time. Yeah. Um, so technical debt is is interesting in that fact because I had no idea that this was a term, what it represented. And um, every, every job I've ever had has sort of had this, because there's timelines, right? And we gotta meet those deadlines. Uh, deadlines, I have a, 
I should do a whole video about why I think deadlines are, are funny things. Um, but yeah, so that's technical debt in, in a whole. It's really just creating work items that aren't real work items for the business, but are for developers that come from maybe um, not being able to build the product that you want for the business or having too short of time to build that product. And then the business not caring about fixing it because it already works, right? So uh, you'll experience technical debt in, in your life. And you know what? I'm, I'm sure there's a couple developers who are screaming about just having horror stories of technical debt in the back of their head. Please feel free to share those in the comments and make everyone smile and, <laughs> and laugh. You don't have to say your company or where it's from, but I think it's I think it's be worth to share it. So please do. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Bye. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about technical debt. What is it? Why it exists? And sort of the harsh re What the fuck are you doing over there? Quick thank to our sponsor, deviceplus.com. If you guys are interested in Arduino and the Internet of Things, such as Raspberry Pis, might I recommend checking them out, deviceplus.com. If you click the link in the top corner, it will take you to a really cool thing. It's an intro beginner level tutorial of how to build a tripwire using Arduino. Check it out.